to Louisville and head coach Charlie Strong. The Cardinals are 4-0 and overall. Uh, last Saturday, uh, Louisville beat Florida International 72-0. to This week, Cardinals also have an open date. Their next game will be October 5th at Temple. Uh, and as we mentioned at the top of the, of the teleconference, uh, quarterback Teddy Bridgewater named to the weekly honor roll once again. Um, Coach, thank you for joining us on the call. If you could take a, a minute to tie up the Florida International game and then tell us what you look forward to getting done on the open date. Well, uh, we played very well in the Florida International uh, game in all three phases. It's just offensively, uh, you know, the thing about it, we didn't have many yards, but we were able to score, and we were 8 for 8 in the red zone, which is so critical, and 70% on third down. And then defensively, um, they were 1 for 13 on third downs again, and we pitched the shutout. And special teams were able to uh, ignite as we got a, a touchdown and a formal recovery and a return yardage was really good. So just overall, just very pleased with the effort of our, ho- our football team. Then this open week, we have a, a chance to uh, just get back to basics and get back to fundamentals, and we still have a lot of work to do. And then this week, we're going to have a chance to work on Temple and Rutgers, so you're going to try to do two, not so much put a game plan in for Rutgers, but get a chance to watch them also. Take questions for Coach Charlie Strong. Please hit star one on your telephone to join the queue, and then the operator will introduce you. Go ahead with the first question, please. We'll take Steve Jones with the Louisville Courier Journal. Charlie, could you, uh, you may have touched on a little bit after the game uh, the other day, but uh, just what did it kind of mean to you uh, or, and your impressions of the coaches uh, to see Michael Lee? Uh, Score and get back in the mix after uh, after the injuries that he's gone through. Well, Michael, before he got injured, was a it was a starter for us. And any time you, you lose a starter, and then for him to come back, you're really excited and excited for him because we know that he still has some potential. And it's all about confidence. And w- once he were able to get that first hit there, which we gave it to him in practice, but for him to get into the game situation, and then to catch that touchdown was big. And, uh, but you, you watch, even when he caught the touchdown, all the players, they just gravitated to him because just the type of person he is, and he's fun to be around, and he has a lot of respect from his, he gained a lot of respect from his teammates. Also, Charlie, uh, just can you, was, was it frustrating at all to you that, that you saw uh, that you guys did win 72 to nothing, but you still went down a spot in the coaches' poll uh, this week? Well, it's not frustrating, Steve. I, I can't control those poles. The only thing we can do is just control how we play and make sure we just continue to play well. But, you know, the best thing for us to do is not look at, you know, what the polls say or what people have to say about it. It's just make sure that each and every game we get better. And next we'll move to Ryan Dunleavy with the New Jersey Press Media. Uh, hey, Charlie. I think, I think you just... I think you just mentioned Rutgers. You said you were going to take a look at Rutgers. Um, I, what was your reaction? I guess I know you have a game. You have a game before that, but your reaction, I guess, yesterday when the conference is leading rusher, uh, Paul James has announced he's not going to play at least for you guys, and how that might change Rutgers. Well, Rutgers is the outstanding team, and uh, and the thing about it, they have they have enough talent there, and I know they have other running backs that they can also use because offensive line is doing a great job of uh, moving the football, and they're blocking the right people, and their quarterback is doing a great job. I haven't had a chance to see Rutgers that much. I really haven't had a chance to look at them now, but I, I know this they're just like us. They've recruited well, and they're going to have a player in place. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. And we'll move on to Jody Demling with CardinalAuthority.com. Good morning, Charlie. Jody. Hey, can you just talk about, I guess, first of all, how did you come out of that game? I know, you know, every game you worry about injuries. Did you come out pretty good? And, and the, kind of the state, the status of your health of the team right now as you head into the bye week? But Jody, we, we uh, came out of the game very well, didn't, didn't lose anyone, and just our, uh, we, we're back to where we were we're, with the health of our team. We, we have the players there, and there's no one that we foresee as we're going to lose for the rest of the season. So we, we, we're pretty good just health-wise with this football team. And with the defense, now I know, you know it's a matter of game by game, but being ranked number one in the country in scoring defense and just how they've played through four games, talk about this is how – you, you kind of envisioned that 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 the defense could be here. Uh, you know, everybody talks about you and they talk about offense, but you're a defensive guy. I know it has to make you proud to to see what the defense has done this year. 
we got to get four games into it, so uh, we can't really get excited. We know we're going to hit a stretch here now. We're going to get into our conference games, and we're going to have to continue to play well on defense. And, and I told the guys, it, it's just a matter of us just making plays, us getting off blocks, and they're just running to the ball, in an aggressive attack in defense. That's what we want to be. And if we continue to play well, we're going to continue to get turnovers. We get the ball back to our offense or create negative yardage plays. But it's, it's still about us. We want to play great defense because that's where it all starts. Thanks, Jody. Thank you, Jody. We'll move on to Daniel Upman with USA Today Sports. Hi, Charlie. I just wanted to ask you, was, was the game on Saturday in your mind, was, was it shortened or, or what exactly went down with the, the running clock or whether it was not, was not a running clock? What's your understanding on that? Daniel, it was it was one of those games where we were just playing so well, and and uh, we kind of were we, you know, we had a better football team, and and not so much. I don't know if it's a running clock and all that, but it it was it was a situation where I never want to get into a game where we try to see how many points we can put up or try to embarrass an opponent because I respect the game too much. And uh, I know this, that they had a lot of injuries over on that side of the football. And, and we weren't trying to embarrass them. We just wanted to make sure that we played well. And then when our second unit went in the game, we wanted to make sure that they got their throws and our quarterback could step back and go throw the football. And our defense had a chance with our twos to go in to, to play well. So I, I guess that was my main concern. How do you balance the desire to get, you know, reserve players' time on the field um, with, you know, a, a game like that that might be getting a little bit out of hand. Obviously, you want to get guys some experience, but you know that this might not be the day. I don't know. Well, you, you look at Will Gardner's a backup quarterback, so when he goes in the game, he's got to be able to run our offense. And you want to give him that opportunity to go run our offense. And, and you don't ever want to feel like you're out there throwing the ball every down to see if you can go score. But he has to go make throws, and our running backs need to go run. Go need to, and our, whomever we put in at running back, he needs to go run the ball hard and run behind his pads and run through defenders. And defensively, we don't, we don't go out there to try to blitz, but we need to see just if something was a goal. If you were to lose a player, that you can get your, your backups, get them adequate work. <clears throat> and next we'll move to Andy Sweeney with ESPN 680 Louisville. Coach, good morning. I was just wondering a couple questions ago. Uh, you, you mentioned how you guys came out of uh, FIU pretty healthy. Uh, does it make it kind of kind of negative that you have a bye week? I know a couple of the players post game said you guys kind of felt like you wanted to keep playing. I know you can always get healthier, but does the bye week maybe come a little too early given that you guys are playing so well and you are pretty healthy? Well, you can look at it either way you like, Andy, but still, we're going to step into the conference. I think that just because that we've been going with a long camp, uh, a long fall camp, and now this is the first time they really get a rest, it, it came at the right times because we need a rest before we start into this uh, conference schedule, and then we'll get us another bye week. But at least you can just break down the season. You know, we just finished the first phase, and now we're going to step into the second phase. Thanks, Coach. Uh -huh, thank you. And we'll move on to Steve Jones with the Louisville Courier Journal. Uh, Charlie, I thought of a second thing to ask. It was when Jody mentioned a little bit about it earlier when he, on his earlier question. But what does it mean to, to you guys that you do have just uh, number one in the country in, in scoring defense and number three in in total defense? Uh, just that, that you do have that and maybe any statement that it says about your program. Well, see, like I said, Jody, I know it's early. We've, we've only played four games. We look to improve each and every game. And uh, it, it's, it's something that they can build on. But still, we're we, uh, we going to hit a conference schedule here where we're going to have to play very good defense. And so we'll, we'll continue to watch it and just see how well we continue to play, play and how we continue to improve week in and week out. What is the, what is the bye week do for you guys uh, recruiting-wise? Does it give you some time to uh, – to travel and things like that. Yes, yeah, so what our coaches will do, they'll go out, in the, they'll go out later on in the week and get a chance to go watch a game on Friday night and uh, go watch some of the recruits that have that have uh, committed to us. We'd like to go watch them play. One other thing, Charlie, do you, uh, uh, a game like the other day, there was a, there was a, a, big, uh, a big margin of victory. Uh, 
what, what do you kind of prefer to be involved in? I know you want to win every game, but do you like a, a real tight game, or do you like to, to know that you guys are, are playing uh, uh, kind of dominating from start to finish and, and having more of a blowout? Well, that's going to depend on our football team. So it, it just it, they would have to go, they were ready to go play. So the way I played well, so it ended up being the way it was. Because you just never know. You want to make sure that your team, your team is prepared to go play. So if you get in a game and you're prepared to play, then good things will happen to you. Now, if, we, if the preparation went there, the focus went there, it could have been a tight game. <clears throat> thank you, Coach. We thank you for the time this week. Look this week. Look forward to talking to you again next Monday. All righty. Thank you. Right, and that is Louisville coach Charlie Strong. The Cardinals with an open open date this week. Next game is October 5th at Temple.